Hello, my dear church boys, and welcome back to yet another episode of St. Robert's Day Game Podcast. And this time I'm chatting with Mr. T. Mr. T is a good friend of mine, a very good day gamer from New York City, very experienced with very good results. I've actually had him on my podcast several, actually a bunch of times before, but why I wanted to have him on again is normally when I do the podcast interviews, it's, uh, for example, right after coaching to show how students were doing or when someone reaches their, you know, first 30 day game lays at specific milestones or talking about very specific topics but i don't do a lot of interviews with very experienced day gamers that show their whole journey or their their whole experience where they are also sharing a very interesting things that you can apply to your day game while you're learning while you're still starting out getting your first lays uh, and that's why I wanted to have him on again. I'm doing multiple interviews like this with very good day gamers to show the big picture of their day game journey because over all the time I've spent in the day game world, way over half a decade, I've seen that there are many, many day gamers who are doing the thing, correct things technically. They've spent the time to understand the model. They know how to stop the girl the right way. Their, their openers are great. Their stacking is great. They're able to get topics to talk about. And they can even tease and storytell about those topics. But still, most of them are just getting maybe some dates here and there, some lays here and there, but they're not getting consistent results. After giving this a lot of thought to try to understand why that's the case and what these guys are missing, I realized that that's because 10 years ago, we went from one extreme to another extreme. When London Day Game Model was born, we went away from doing the same stuff people used to do in clubs like peacocking and doing like really weird canned routines, maybe uh, just, you know, being yourself, being a a cool guy when chatting with girls all of that stuff didn't work and we realized that long like 10 years ago and london day game model was born and london day game model was a very structured approach to day game it was it was really a structure it was a system it was a model so it became very appealing to men because a lot of men like things things that are structured there are rules you do this and this is the result you're gonna get but People started talking about this in a more and more structured way, and it turned basically too structured. It turned too rigid. We had gone from one extreme to another, from just being yourself and doing weird peacocking and, and routines, to just being robots reciting the same lines, and both of these things don't work. So I realized that guys need way more to succeed in their game than just structured game. Thinking about all the reasons I've seen guys fail, I came up with five things you need to figure out to do good in day game. I call them five pillars of day game. Those are looks. It doesn't mean you have to be 20 year old, really good looking, really tall, but you have to do as much as possible with what mother nature has given to you, especially we're talking about fixing your style and grooming. A lot of guys skip this. They think that all they need is structured game, but good looks or good style and grooming just makes things easier. The next pillar is obviously structured game, but you can't always be structured. You can't always be very rigid. So over time, you need to learn to improvise to come up with interesting shit to say about any topic that comes up. One we will call that pillar number three, structured game. Next pillar number four is living a happy life, uh, which simply means if uh, I've seen very depressed guys who have very ne negative, uh, kind of thinking process and self-image struggle in day game a lot. So if that's your case, you definitely need to fix this before you'll start getting decent results in day game. And also location, because sometimes guys are day gaming in cities that are too small, or sometimes guys are day gaming in cities that are just too hard for day game. Not everyone can make it in places like New York City, London, and other tougher day game places. So sometimes these guys need to ask themselves a question. Am I willing to go on day game in an easier city if that's my only option? In these interviews, I'm showing how these high level advanced day gamers have went through these five pillars of day game in their journey. This is the second interview of this type I record. I published another one a month ago and the next one that I've already recorded is coming out in a few weeks as well. Before we jump into this podcast episode, a few quick up updates about coaching spots and things like that. The off season is finally over. The spring is here in North 
Northern Hemisphere. So I'm heading back to Europe. I'll be there in a month, mid-May. May is already fully booked, but the next available coaching spots are in June. So if you want to learn day game with me in Europe, then you'll find all the information about how coaching usually works, prices, etc. in the link in the description. Check everything out. If everything sounds good, we're going to hop on a short WhatsApp call to talk details. You can also join our private community on online coaching program where I'm publishing day game infields. You can join our group coaching calls and get your day game questions answered by me and other high level advanced day gamers. You'll find all the information about it in the link in the description. And if you're going out, you're getting your numbers, but you want to improve your texting so more of those numbers convert to dates, then head over to daygamecourses.com to check out my free texting guide. And if some of your numbers are already converting to dates, but you want to understand what to do on dates better, so you would need less dates to take girls home, so more of your dates would end up in your bedroom, then again, head over to daygamecourses.com and check out my free dating guide. And now let's jump into the conversation with Mr. T, which as usual when I'm having guests is audio only. So if you prefer, you can simply listen to this on a background on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. And hello, Mr. T. Uh, good morning. Good hello. evening. <laughs> hello, Sam Roberts. Good morning. Good, good evening for you. Good morning for me. <laughs> we have a 12 hour time zone difference. It's ridiculous. Um, well, Mr. T, you, you were, you were, I think, my, the first foreigner I ever coached when I, when I started coaching. You were the, the first non Latvian I, I ever worked with. I had dabbled around with a few Latvians with like some shorter sessions. And then I think you were the first guy who reached out to me right after I did the podcast on Top Rare, literally like a few days later after it was published. I, I, I think. Do you remember how long ago it was? Um, I remember exactly when that was. That was 2018, um, October, September 2018, August, September of 2018. It's five and a half years ago. Yeah. Five and a half years ago. Ridiculous. Well, uh, let's, gu- let's give guys a little bit of a background info because we will assume that, that the guys listening to this haven't heard uh, the podcast episodes we've done before. So maybe let's give them a good idea about uh, who you are, what, how old you are, where are you from, what do you do more or less for a living, etc. Could you give us some background info? I don't have to give my social security number, do I? Ah, oh, fuck. My, my phishing attempt didn't work. <laughs> too smart for you um all right i won't give all the details but i'll give i'll give what's important so i'm currently 35 and actually you and i are not too far apart in age both libras um yeah and i live in america i live in new york but i'm not originally from here i'm originally east african i've just been in the u.s for almost i think over 15 years now um Life's good, and I I do software engineering. That's my job, though. When I'm not trying to make money, I'm usually either working out or shooting photos. I have a very um, strong passion for art, so something artsy is is always brewing. And I love talking to random people, which is something that I've been doing constantly for the last 12 years. Right, you. I, uh, yeah, we should mention how you started. Yeah, we'll go over that in like a sh- you know short version. We can do like a two minute version, but 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 uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your your day game uh, history, kind of just so that we we know you know we show the guys that Mister T knows what the fuck he's talking about. He's 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 a legit day gamer. What's your what's your day game experience? You know how long you've been day gaming for a long time? But well, how many day game plays do you have? Um, I have, so I have my book here. I don't keep the memory, um, of them as I go, but the, I think about over 50 as of now, um, somewhere between 50 and 60, they get lays. Nice. And what about kind of lays from overall, including other sources? You know, I don't know what you're doing there. (laughs) Sex parties. No, uh, those don't count. Sex, but, um, (laughs) that's, you can never keep count anyways. And I've not been to any, but, um, no, I, I see that as about 90. I have like this little like black book and I'm just going through, but yeah, it's about 90. I do actually have to update it for the last few months. You're close to a very round number. You're close to a very, very 
wild number 100 that that's that's a very very big number i think um uh, okay yeah so let's we're, we're as everyone knows we're talking about five pillars of day game and and we're looking at specific examples of very good day gamers uh, very experienced day gamers and how they went through these pillars uh, what was their kind of story because it's a little bit different for for each for each person but i think when when people hear different stories they can see what they're doing and maybe learn something from those stories and understand, oh, wait, I've been focusing only on maybe just structured game, but I, ha- I have kind of never took care of my looks or I'm digging in a super bad location. So we're going to look at your story. Um, let's start with how did you start day gaming? Can we, can we go quickly over your, uh, you know, conversations on bus and things like that? Yeah, so um, I started day gaming, or at least I got into that. Um, into the spirit of trying to to a cold approach or just talk to people um but it's in 2012 um i actually do remember that uh it was very i did not know how to navigate myself um around social situations particularly parties i'd be that person who if you invited to a party i'd cling to you like i don't know like a leech and never leave um but i realized that after two parties that's not the way i wanted to live my life I was like, this is this is ridiculous. I need to solve this whole social situation for one. So the first, um, the first way I got into talking to anybody or even approaching people was that I, on the night that I had the realization, I vowed that the following year, 2013, I had to talk to, I had to say hello to some stranger in any situation, no matter how, how um, difficult it seemed. And this meant, um, trying to engage someone in a bus, trying to talk to people in an elevator where it's very quiet and very squishy. Um, any particular situation where there was someone, I had to at least say hi. So that's how I initially started. Um, and it was very difficult. It was difficult, but I, I kind of, I don't remember how I managed to do it then, but I know that every day I made sure that I, I, I uttered my mouth. I'd open some, my mouth and say something and slowly it got easier. Um, so I was just talking to people. And then occasionally while I was on the bus, I would notice that when I was talking to certain girls, they would be giving me this look. And I never understood that look. Um, it's what we call the Bambi eyes look. Um, but back then I didn't know what it was. I was just like still like on the friendly, um, on the friendly path. But um, I did eventually run into uh, a video of a day game out on YouTube. And I realized that they were doing almost everything I was doing, but they were getting dates out of it. And I'd never considered even trying to get someone out on a date. Um, and so somehow it clicked that the girls, that this look that I was getting every once in a while, like when they're paying too much attention or when they're getting off the bus, looking at me, like I forgot to say something or they forgot something. I eventually realized that that was, Oh, that's the cue. That's the cue. That girl likes you. So even in that state, I didn't have a structured approach to game. This was me just kind of, walking in the dark, stumbling in the dark, just trying to get over my social fear. And uh, that's how I ended up kind of landing into, uh, initially into day game. So um, on, uh, how, how did you transition to, like, to really, really day gaming? What did you start with? What was the, you know, because people start, some, some people discover maybe, some people discover London day game model and a very structured approach to day game. Others discover natural game and then others discover some super weird stuff, you know, some old school stuff. So what did you start with? Um, uh, actually, when I, when, I, when I consciously decided that I was going to uh, try to um, change my dating life or like get girls out on dates, the first thing I looked up that landed was actually the game, the book, the game. And I read it and... Um, Back then, having just like started college, I didn't really have an interesting life. And I'm reading about mysteries, storytelling, and how he like was in a car and it overturned and how he used this to like DHV. And I'm like, man, I have nothing to use as a DHV. So I could not relate to any of that material because I was like, where the hell am I going to have this crazy lifestyle? I, I don't even have any money or I'm not, yeah, just out of college, super poor. So it didn't really click, but I was like, man, this, this is terrible. Like, this is what I have to do just to like get a date. This sucks. Like it was so shitty. Um, so I didn't give it uh, a try, but this I did at like nighttime and I'll do like these routines. I'll get like rings and perfume 
and like go around asking girls, hey, smell my wrist, which which perfume do you like more? And I didn't know why I was doing it, right? I was just doing it because the instructions say do that. And I'm like, why am I not getting laid? Anyway, so that was that was bullshit. <laughs> fucking total mess and i never really felt like um i was being genuine while i was doing any of that so it really bothered but i was just doing it because i was like well this is what i need to do to get laid so fuck i'll just do it um but to answer your question the day game thing um again at this time i was also talking to people in the bus and i ran into i think i ran into a video of yad approaching someone on the street london day game style and that was the inspiration for me to actually go and try to do what he was doing um, which I failed miserably at the first time. I like ended up stalking these two pairs of girls for like, I think I was in Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco and I was like, all right, I want to go approach those two girls and I cannot go approach another girl because if I do it, then I'm going to end up just like making up excuses to not approach any other girl. So I was like, I have to approach this particular girl. And even if it takes me 15 minutes, I must do it. And that's how I became a stalker. But anyway, <laughs> so I, I, st- I stalked these girls for like 15 minutes. And in my mind, I'm like, this is also dumb. So I create this elaborate plan. I'm like, all right, the light's going to switch. I'm going to run across the road. They'll be standing right next to the shop. And I'm going to do like the front stop and it's all going to be magical. And so that light changes to green. I cross the road. Everything is going to plan. Midway, they turn to face the direction I was coming from while I was in mid sprint. And I, I completely like just <laughs> lost my composure. I couldn't, when I stopped, I was like, well, there goes my plan in my head. And, and so I just mumbled, mumbled through everything. And I was like, hey, I saw you. You look really nice. And they did not actually. One girl smiled and I was not about it. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was my first, I said hello. And then I was like, all right, um, well, I just wanted to say you look nice. Um, have a nice day. And then because I thought that because I came in sprinting, I should also continue sprinting on the way out. So I, <laughs> I, sprint, <laughs> I sprint away and then I go under this like staircase under a motel. And I'm like, that was like the most rubbish approach I've ever done. So I did that, but then after that approach, I went and I did like five more. And the last, uh, I got kind of, I warmed up in a way, funny enough. So I did five more because I was like, I can't go home until I've, I've actually like done something that I feel I'm proud of. So ultimately I ended up approaching the sixth set of girls that I approached. One of them was really, really pretty. They were leaving San Francisco, I think later that day. So no opportunity for a date, but at least I got to engage them. They, the the rapport was built and everything else. It just didn't work out through the technical. Me- I didn't know how the technical mechanics of like working through everything else was. I was kind of trying to reverse engineer what I'd seen on YouTube. That was my first attempt at day game. Well, I have to say yeah. the important part is you did it. Like you did the open after walking around for fifteen minutes. That, that's you know the first approach for most people is very very hard. I mean, for me it took. You know, you walk around for 15 minutes. I walk around for, for two weeks, for two hours a day, like more or less every, like, and, and every day for two weeks until I did my first day game approach. So, you know, like it's, it's, you did it. It's, it's, it's amazing. Like most people, you know, never do it. And that was, that was around 50 to 60 day game days ago. So, you know, that was the most important approach you ever did. And uh, so, okay, you were trying to mimic some stuff you saw on on what that Yad was doing on his YouTube videos, if I understand correctly. Um, when uh, so, did you ever kind of went or how did you start learning the the structured? Yeah, the structured part because because uh, you said that that you did start with uh, with what with with long, with day game blueprint or. Yeah, yeah. So eventually, at the time, Yad was doing the Yad show, and that was that was like when they were just sharing videos of approaches, but they didn't actually like they didn't explain what he was doing. And then um, Andy Yosha, like they came together and they created the day game blueprint, which was what I eventually landed on. And I was like, oh, at least this makes more sense, right? Now I can understand why he was doing all these things, right? Which is like, oh, you need to like do the, you need to do the, the front stop to kind of get their attention and to have like a powerful way to stop them to listen to you. And then you need to have a compliment that you throw in there, kind of disarm them and show that you're kind of a chill person. And then transition from that into, um, after the compliment transition into trying to like get a conversation going, right? Try to find something to vibe on. And and then from there, you, you tease a little bit. And then at some point when you feel like you have kind of gotten 
on the, the you've won them over, then you you can or maybe you don't win them over. But at some point, you have to then say that you want to take them out so that you can get the the number, and then you follow that up with actually a date request. Um, so I didn't. I, I that was for me what at least got me to have some structure and and kind of not just be flailing around and, and know at least how to go from hello to actually getting the number and potentially requesting the date. Uh, because I knew how to say hello. I knew how to build rapport. Uh, and I had stumbled my way into attraction somehow, but I would never pull the trigger and I didn't know how to follow that up. But the day game blueprint was kind of like the the thing that ushered me into having a more structured, more re- replicatable uh, way of doing this. Yeah, Day Game Blueprint was actually how I started. I, I found Day Game Blueprint uh, years ago. I mean, so many years ago. I don't know when it was created, but, you know, like, definitely it, it was a few years before, several years before we met, because I started day gaming uh, a few years earlier, and then I met a girl, and, and I was in a relationship with her for, for a few years. So, like, I, I did get my few kind of opens and a few notches, the first few lays before that, and that's I learned day game from day game blueprint, which was a very, very, very in depth course about day game. I think you might say a bit too much in depth, like all the kind of tiny nuances they they were they were teaching there. But it's amazing, like how how deep they go into explaining everything. I kind of loved it. I would not suggest people learn from it right now. But because because I, I do think it's a little bit like day game has evolved to a much more different thing than it was back then. That was sort of like uh, you know Tom Torreira talked about day game 2.0 and day game 3.0. Like day game blueprint was day game 2.0. It, it was the conversations were pretty long, if I recall correctly. They went way over the what, what we do now, like I don't know, like six to nine minutes, something like that. And back then, I think they did way longer conversations. They they used to go into deep rapport in in day game sets and and the thing was they used to go on multiple dates I think it was kind of fairly typical uh, but but the product itself was was incredible if someone kind of has a lot of free time on their hands and they want to geek out really really kind of deeply then I I think it's a cool course to I, I think you can still buy it somewhere or you pay like a monthly fee to have access for it the last time I looked it was something like 70 bucks or 70 euro a month to have access to it and it's it's incredible it's like several days of recordings and um okay yeah. so you started with that and then that kind of gave you gave you structure and, and you were still in San Francisco right yes I was so so what happens next Mm, San Francisco is one a shitty place to day game <laughs> because um, there are not as many. Um, well, it depends on what you're into, but the girls I was into were not there, and there's just way too many dudes. Like the the um, the ratio of of girl to guy is very low. Um, and the girls that are there, like the only very specific parts of the city where you'd find like the objectively attractive girl. And then like Marina. Uh, it, yes. The Marina Russian, Russian Hill, Telegraph Hill. Right. Um, yeah. And no, no, not, not really North beach, but yeah, most of the Marina. And then you'd probably want to go about the golden gate bridge, which doesn't make sense. Cause then you can't like walk back if you're day gaming. But yeah, those are the parts <laughs> on the Presidio ish. Um, but yeah, so at some point I did live in the marina. Um, ironically, I never day game as much there because it's a really small space. It's really a really like tiny community. You can easily like loop around. Um, but anyway, I, I did I did a bunch of approaches in San Francisco. Most of the time, I would do them in um, in uh, there's a park in the Mission called Dolores Park on on weekends. It used to be like packed. There were just people everywhere. So that was a great place because everyone would just go and congregate there. So that was good. It's not the same anymore. Um, but after, while I was in San Francisco, I did do a few trips to, um, I think I went to Sweden, I went to the Netherlands, and I did realize there were way, way prettier girls outside of San Francisco, and a lot of them were a lot nicer to me. So it was like for the same level of girl in San Francisco, or I guess in America in general, uh, for the same quality of, of attractiveness, 
they were way nicer to me in Europe than they were in America. So I was like, oh my God, like, fuck America. I need to leave this place. <laughs> but definitely fuck San Francisco. I definitely need to leave this place. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, and at that point, I'd also, I think, started listening to Tom Torero because um, there were some gaps that I felt were in, um, in uh, I was, I was, there's some things, some stumbling blocks I was running into and I, I didn't feel like the day game blueprint was covering them for me. And when I got into, when I, I listened to some of Tom Torero's podcasts, there was some very, there was some very important advice in there that um, definitely cut some of the fat out. Um, I think he used to do, in some cases, he would do like five, five minute sets if he needed to, or like, he'd kind of like, um, he would accelerate to do the model, but it would be very quick. He would kind of like skip some steps, but try to be intentional about what he did. Um, in being like making sure that the, uh, the, the fact that he's, he's trying to, it's clear that the girl knows that he's flirting with him and that when he's closing, that he gives off this uh, idea that he's not really just trying to like, well, he's just like the person you have adventures with. Right. So some of those, some of those, um, cues from, from Tom's podcast were like, oh, okay, I could probably optimize some of the stuff I'm doing so that I, I can get through this a lot faster. Um, yeah, so I, I listened to Tom's podcast, and that was about the same time I was living in San Francisco, and you were on that podcast. Uh, he he was, at this point, I was doing his Euro tour, and uh, you, I guess, meeting with very good day gamers in Europe. So you happened to be on that podcast, and I just left San Francisco. This was 2018. I just left San Francisco to go to Europe because I was trying to move to Europe. Uh, which makes sense because you want to really move to where <laughs> where you feel like you can thrive, um, and that's kind of how we met in um, in 2018. After I had started incorporating some of Tom Tom's um, uh, advice into my my day game. Yeah, and I remember very specifically what your big problem was in your day game sets, and and uh, um. And the the thing that Day Game Blueprint uh, missed maybe was they they didn't they they were if you were a very very polite nice guy like you would still day game like that you would still day game like a very polite nice guy and they they never talked about that maybe maybe Tom maybe the way Tom Torero presented it was he took it to took sort of like the other extreme but that was his personality that was his lifestyle that was what he, that was who he was and i i kind of was day gaming the same way but but tom kind of filled this gap in information and explained listen you don't have to be like a boring nice guy you can you can be the guy in the uh <laughs> You can be the guy walking down the street in in boots and 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 ripped jeans and leather jacket and three layers, and then every every day gamer started looking like that on the street. And then uh, still a lot of day gamers dress the same. It's so hilarious. There's the day gamer dress code. But anyways, so Tom Torero kind of filled that gap, and he showed you don't have to be like a boring nice guy. You can you know you can be a bit more edgy. And and then when we did we did a little bit. We did I think two coaching sessions in Riga, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so when I was listening to your sets uh when when you were in Riga that was the one thing we were working on. You were having these you were doing a stop and and getting topics etc cetera, etc cetera, but you were having like a nice guy American chit chat conversations which is extremely common for for guys in uh, in general from 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 some parts of US from definitely from Canada uh, sometimes from UK, but you, from UK, you sometimes get guys that also have this problem, but sometimes they're also very, can, uh, they, they know how to tease and have fun. And, and that's really cool. But that was, that was, yeah, that was your big thing. And then you, you discovered in Tom Torero, Tom Torero's content that, okay, it turns out I don't have to do, do this. And uh, was that the gap that it filled or, or, or something else? No, um, you know, in a way, so uh, to address that, chit chat thing that was that was i think a carryover from me trying to reverse engine because initially i started with like day game blueprint and i was in, not watching a lot of yeah videos it was me trying to reverse engine what yeah i did but something i didn't realize eventually when i i got to meet and walk around with yeah is that he was very crafty in how he would do his teasers and be sexual and actually bring up those topics and i me who was just like observing from the outside in was missing all those bits so like that polarity was not actually being subtly communicated 
Um, and then when you switch to Tom style, um, Tom style was less of like being uh, subtle about it and kind of like being a bit more um, overt, a bit more like there's a bit of presence that you project to kind of um, convey that, hey, this is what, this is kind of the dynamic we have. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's kind of like the, I ended up just switching to a style that I could easily replicate versus one that was a bit, um, where I needed to have way, I don't know what kind of creativity, um, which it was just easier for me to like be a bit more polarizing and a bit more kind of, um, less, less subtle, but more, more kind of, um, uh, blatant ish about, about, uh, what was going on. Um, that plus also the, I think Tom also did address certain things that you have to kind of like having volume, right? I don't think I ever remember the blueprint talking about volume. Maybe I missed that part, but, um, I didn't realize how much volume was needed and how he also covered the fact that, yeah, sometimes girls will not text back. Uh, it's not your fault. <laughs> There's a bunch of other shit going on. There's a lot of like things that he really went into detail in his podcast. That I guess that one product could not address, and because you also got questions from other people, like you'd be like, "Oh, I have that, I have that problem." So um, uh, you could relate to other people's problems and how people are overcoming them. Yeah. So uh, you said in the beginning that when you read the book, the game, and uh, you started doing kind of some drills from mystery, some some routines. You never felt genuine doing it. And I know that right now you have developed your own style of game. You're doing your own thing. Uh, we're going to talk about that eventually. But when you were doing this, these things you learned from Tom Torero, did that feel genuine to you? Yeah. So one of the, the things that drew me to day game in general was because I, I like being cheeky. I like um, creating tension just for that, for, for shits and giggles, right? Why well, I'll be the one, uh, the kind of person who just go and stare at someone when I'm ordering my cafe just to see what they do, just for the hell of it. And I always found that day game, just the concept of being able to approach people in um in uh, in in broad daylight where most people are like, you can't do this or you shouldn't do this, was at least my way of throwing the middle finger to the man and being like, hey, yeah, I can actually like do these things that most people won't. So in in general, the 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 concept of of cold approach and having this freedom to do what um, most people are feel handicapped when it comes to being social was something that really appealed to me. And then with regards to some of the things that Tom mentioned, um, with regards to style, I mean, I, I didn't necessarily care for the for the leather boots, black jacket kind of style thing like there's certain variations of it i prefer like i would probably do that more on the elegance elegant kind of t tilt more towards a version of that that looks a bit more elegant versus than rugged but i guess some people just wear the rugged thing i don't know if the look works for you good for you do what yeah. do what 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 helps you out but um i didn't feel as uh i didn't feel that I felt that it, I could relate to that more than trying to tell story because with the mystery method or not a mystery method, some of the things in the game where like, he's like, tell these stories, these DHVs, it's very hard to like, just replicate, tell you literally a lot of people, I think were telling mysteries own story as DHVs, which is stupid, right? You didn't live that life. Like it makes no sense to be talking about how, I don't know, like you are in a, in a hospital and telling the nurse how like you could just like seduce her but you're, you are just too depressed to seduce her. Seduce her. That was mystery's life, right? So it doesn't make sense to like try to tell, I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with that story, but the mystery told. But anyway, like it doesn't make sense. And um, I wouldn't want to tell people's stories that I wanted to figure out what's the principle behind this so that I can just relate it to myself. And so again, with the style thing, I'd probably be like, okay, so you need to have a particular archetype. So let me see what archetype I want to convey. And then I will try to replicate that in the clothes that I wear. And how I, how I, the presence that I have. And I felt that that relate, that was at least a principle based way with a little bit of training wheels than where it's like you're giving a man a fish instead of showing them how to like figure out how to fish. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, 
discovering Tom's stuff and 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 doing some a bit of infield and and, and so you, so you had you had developed your your structured game. Uh, what? How did that go? And what was the next? Um, what was the next big thing you had to kind of fix? What was the next kind of wall you ran into, or or whatever we we want to call it? Yeah, I can't remember all the the order in which I ran stumbling blocks, but so initially it was no structure. Didn't know what I was doing. Then eventually it was like, okay, I have a structure to follow. It is a bit rigid, and one of the things that actually did happen with me and also with a few of my friends who uh, a few friends that I met who were also who had started day gaming is that after about let's say a week of if you've been going out for a week or two uh, and doing maybe 10 approaches every day um, there's a point where you feel like a robot because you're literally saying the same thing and our our typical thing was hey I saw you over there I thought you looked really nice blah 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 and eventually the approach lost its power because we're just literally regurgitating things over and over and it became very boring. Um, but we were only doing it because we're like, we have to follow the structure, right? We have to follow the structure to a T, otherwise um, we won't get results. And there is some truth to it, that if you deviate too far away from the structure and improvise too much without keeping track of where you're at, um, you will probably screw up your sets a lot more. Right, you need to be kind of consciously aware of what you're doing, rather than just like, um, just kind of flailing in the wind and making stuff up as you go. You have to always keep in your mind what the intention is. Um, so the the stumbling block there was like, how do I now get out of this uh, repetitive, monotona, monotonic um, style of always approaching, where almost every start is always going to be the same. The teasers are always going to be the same. And of course, there's certain teasers that are general. You can use them for a lot of people and they will work and the girl will laugh and maybe she will feel a bit attracted and then you need to do the thing. But then it becomes a bit boring. And I think it's always important to remember that unless your whole goal is to just get laid every time, um, if you really want to connect with people, you can't really go, you can't really just stick to like a structure the whole time because then you're kind of hiding yourself. Um, and then like, what's, what's the point? So that was the stumbling block that I, I arrived at. And then I tried to develop a style. Yeah, because, um, you put it very nicely because when guys run into this thing, everyone sooner or later, or many people sooner or later start feeling robotic if they keep using the same opener and the same stack. And the, the, the big mistake they make is they say, okay, I'm going to improvise. <laughs> And that obviously doesn't work as well. You, then you're just, as you said, flailing in a wind. Whereas uh, the, a much better solution is just say, okay, you know, I'm tired of this opener. I'm going to change my opener. I'm going to change my pre-opener. I'm going to experiment with different stacks, with with different stories. And you just kind of, you you improvise while still following the structure of, of the interaction. You still have the the... Yeah, you still have the structure there, and then you're just, or you still have the framework there, and then you're just filling that framework or the template. You're filling the template with, you know, oh, this is the space and a template for the opener. Well, I'm taking out the one I use normally, and I'm adding a different one. I'm experimenting with three different openers, or like, you know, you, instead of having like three different stacks, I've probably experimented with, I don't know, like 10, 20 stacks, and I, I used to have like the regular stacks, and then I, I I used to do stacks that were, you know, 30 seconds long, and it's, it's a lot of weird shit. I've done shit where I walk up to a girl on the street, I just point to her and a finger, to her, out, like, to kind of, and, like, kind of, the finger can, I, I just show from, for, like, kind of, shit, how do I explain this? I just kind of point from her head to her toes, like, kind of showing the, all of all of her, I just pointed at that all of it, sort of like with a finger, do a, a up and down a few times, and I just look in her eyes and I said, I'm "Nice." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like where you're like you're you're, you're critiquing by just pointing the hot ensemble, right? No, no, not critiquing. Like, just it, that's the opener. That was like I say, "Hey, sorry," and I just point at her outfit and I like everything that in her look and just with a smirky smile on my face, I just say, "Nice." <laughs> like it's just yeah it's the whole compliment is just a nice <laughs> but it's effective yeah it, it worked no it's if someone starts doing it right now it's not going to be effective oh no, that they, was no they need really okay 
yeah, because the the thing like if they if they just copy paste try to replicate this, that's not gonna work. Even if I did that right now, it wouldn't work. Like it worked because I was day gaming so much that most of the commu- like a lot of the things were just you open the girl and and she already knows what's up and 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 you know it's already you know like there there is no need for for beautiful verbal game because the sub communication is just is just yeah. so strong in that moment that it's just it's just boom and and I always uh, used to ask girls so when did you know you were gonna sleep with me and and sometimes you get these answers is like you know when you stopped me and I saw how you looked at me is like uh, it was yeah I, I want to bang this guy <laughs> <laughs> so but obviously guys shouldn't do like that. shouldn't do stuff like that but but the the thing is yeah what you were saying is when when guys become robotic they they start improvising which is not a good idea but you should still improvise while staying within the structure within the framework template or however you want to call it which is pretty much what you said you did and then you developed your your own style of game uh when this was happening were you still in san francisco or was that already in new york city um let me think so Well, this was in New York, but you know, when I think back, it's actually more of, I think I started after I, I, I did a lot of the, after I got a lot of the structure in place, I then, um, some of the things that I, the improv things that I would otherwise improvise were things that I was kind of doing before that were actually just personal to me, just like behavior wise, just things that I was, I have a tendency to do, but now I was fitting them into I was putting my character into the uh, the framework more, right? So it's kind of like I did what maybe four years, five years plus of some kind of structured game. Um, actually, structured where it was very like I had to do everything in order. Um, even the texting was was very like robotic. It did work, but it it did become very uh, very predictable. Um, but what, what I did is I, I kind of then allowed myself to, to definitely improvise. And there is something to keep in mind that I would improvise at different levels. It's, I think it's not, it's important not to improvise the whole set because really what I think people may want to look at, at least how I looked at it was I go out and I always experiment. Like I, in fact, the, what I would do is I used to have people I I would wing with. And I would go and approach someone and talk to them for a bit. And then, of course, people don't understand. They think that the whole goal of, of, an, of an interaction is go and get the number. But they'll be like, hey, did you get the number? And I'm like, no. It's like, then I was like, oh, like she looked like she liked you. Why didn't she like get the number? It's like, well, I was trying to experiment with something there, right? Like, I didn't really care. Like, maybe it wasn't a girl I was actually into, but she was at least interesting enough to talk to and to try some new material to see how it, um, it performed. And that was my way of um, having a low, uh, a low, what is it? A low risk way of of uh, experimenting, whereby I could get away from the set and not feel bad, um, or from the interaction and not feel bad. But it would be, give me an opportunity to test out um, new material or different things and see how well they did. But the the time period we're talking about right now this is like way into your day game experience you already have a bunch of yeah. plays at this point right this is we're not talking about you starting you know you you do your you kind of start structured game and then the next thing you do is is you're doing this like this was kind of way 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 later sort of when you yeah. really started developing your own style of game which is you have a you have a very different style of game from 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 other people you have your own thing and this is what happens with every good day gamer like they they develop their own stuff. They develop what works for them, and and the, the important part for the beginners is not to try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but but every experienced day gamer does that does that. And so I remember uh, I wanted to bring up the because we're looking at kind of reasons why day gamers fail in day game and things they have to change. And and right after we right after the trip to Riga, I remember I had you saved uh, in my phone with your name and then San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, pretty soon you had moved to New York. Uh, can you tell the guys why did you move to New York City? Yeah, so 
the reason I moved to New York was just because uh, there were more women. <laughs> there were more women, and apparently they were pretty. At least that's what the side. Not lived in New York for a while, but it was like, hey, New York has way too many women. They're all lonely, and uh, and uh, they're all attractive. And I was like, well, fuck San Francisco. Let me go to New York. Um, and also, I wanted after. So just after I left Europe, I think we had been to. I don't know if on that trip I was with you in Serbia or I went by myself, but I had gone through enough um, Eastern European countries that I was like, man, like the, a lot of attractive girls. I have no problem approaching a good number of them. Some of them I do, but not all of them. Like if there's enough of them, it's just easy that you can go from one girl to another and not kick yourself. So um, it, I came to the realization that really what I needed to do was go to a place that had enough girls that... Uh, if I tried an interaction with one and it went to shit, that I wouldn't be like, oh man, I'm not going to find another girl like that for another 10 days or something like that. Um, but also volume-wise, also just in terms of appeal for uh, a day game, it just wasn't worthwhile to approach in. For the amount of time and effort, um, the result was not necessarily... Uh, you could, I wasn't getting the best bang for my buck. And if I could put the same effort in in a different place and get like girls who I found really more a lot attract attractive, I think that was just a bigger win. Um, and so that's that's why I left uh, San Francisco so that I could have a, a a playground, you could say, where I had actually more opportunities to to in, interact with attractive girls and get better at interacting with them, and also actually um, probably date a few of them that were within. Um, the uh, attractiveness that I wanted. Yeah, and a lot of guys aren't really ready to make the jump because that's a big thing. To change the city you live in for dating is is a very big thing. But when you really think about it, you know, when you when you live, I mean, you you let's say you grew up in a place where well, you moved to to the U.S. I assume because there were way more opportunities in the U.S. than 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 where you were born, right? Yes, yeah. And and so it's the same. Like just people a lot of people are making these these big moves uh, for opportunities and dating is just one of those things if and if someone realizes they live in a place where there are not a lot of beautiful girls or or in a place where no one objectively not just them on their bodies, yeah, but but there's no there're no stories of guys doing good with women there uh, in day game. Maybe there's they're very, very strict kind of stereotypes about age gaps and things like that. I think guys sometimes have to ask this question, okay, is this important enough for me to to move to a different place? And then a lot of a lot of men have said yes. And and you know, you're also thinking about moving away from New York City right now, just uh, because, you know, partially I understand because of the dating scene there. Is that correct? Not not only because of the dating scene, but partially. Um, yeah, there is there is definitely uh, a difficulty to New York. It's possible, but <laughs> it is hectic. And um, yeah, so the girls are here. They're pretty. Um, depending on who, you, what kind of girl you're into, you might have a, a hard time getting them to come out because there's a lot of things going on around in New York. There are a lot of offers that they're getting because they're attractive. So like people are inviting them to exclusive clubs exclusive um places like soho house um to go to dinner at restaurants and so unless you are i don't know like the most charming man on earth um you have a lot of things that you're going to be competing with um and a lot of richer people so it is possible because not all the girls can get all the guys but a lot of girls get a lot of get a lot of offers from uh, different places um so that does make it um a lot more work has to go into into getting these particular really attractive model model girls, right? Yeah, we're talking about really really hot women. We're not talking about the average girl walking down the street in New York City. We're right. talking about very beautiful women. And if you want to go after that, then maybe New York City is not the place to be. Just because, well, everyone's going after that and the competition there is extremely tough if you're going for that level of women. Whereas if you go to some different places, like you'll have the same level of hotness with, with none of that crazy, crazy, crazy level of competition. 
Like if, if someone very, very average looking with very average income or whatever thinks they're going to move to New York City and crash it, well, then there are exceptions. And maybe if you're really young and then you're, you're gaming the NYU girls, then that's, that's a different story. But again, that's not kind of what, what, what people are, what we're, what we're talking about here. So, okay, uh, you, you moved to New York City, and let's talk about changing your style, because I remember New York City was the place where you realized that, that uh, the, looks, the looks have to change, the looks have to, have to become better. Can you tell that story? Yeah, so for a long time, um, <laughs> I, think, I think I was sold on the idea that you can always be X, X well, some people, I guess, are, but... Um, you can be like, you can just use charm alone. You can just use quote unquote game, as they say, this magical spell binding um, formula that will get you any girl, no matter how hot she is or how, how um, high up on the SMB she is. Um, and uh, I guess in, in some level of delusion, I, uh, I mean, I, I did succeed without changing my style for a long time. Um, I would I'd probably go and approach in tank tops. Um, and um yeah i didn't i really didn't really lie i mean i had i I dressed good enough i didn't dress terrible but i think um having some kind of dressing in a way that tells a story about who you are is probably more um more effective in that um first impressions will always matter um i think i think the knowing that first impressions the, the whole thing around first impressions is maybe mm, underrated um but uh, first impressions matter and um this has to do with your energy your vibe but also your style and um, maybe your style might not kill an interaction if it's like neutral it will definitely kill it if it's terrible if it like it, it evokes um thoughts of you like being I don't know, like a soccer dad, if you're dressing like in big weird sneakers or some stuff that just does not somehow um, co- correspond with your personality in a way that seems cool. Because you can be quirky in a way that I guess is charming and win over some people, but you really have to have some some level of uh, congruence that kind of fits, right? Eccentric, charming seducer, probably. But for the typical person, I think if you look at the bell curve, uh, chances are your uh, whatever you present, especially in a split second, especially in New York where people like have to go somewhere, they will make that calculation really, really quickly and be like, you're trying to sell me something. You're a beggar. This is danger. Um, I just don't like how you look. <laughs> you don't look important enough. I don't know what thoughts go in there, but I can imagine those that stream and it's done within a split second and the girls will sidestep you. So... um one of the things that I, after, after doing a lot of approaches, like, why are these, you know, like there's this thing where you're trying to approach a girl and she doesn't even acknowledge that you exist as a physical presence. She kind of like walks through you or past you like a, like you're a ghost. Um, I used to experience those a lot. Um, and I used to wonder why, why that would happen. And I was like, well, the only thing I can imagine is that they think I'm probably like the other. Uh, one of the other hustlers on the street and New York has a lot of people like on the street trying to hustle you for, to save the dogs, save the kids in Africa. Those fuckers never saved me. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, those NGO people, um, and then also people trying to like maybe crazy schizophrenic people. So there's a lot and you don't want to, you want to, the thing I really tried to do was like, okay, let me look at what these people look like and let me, let me make sure I look as far and different from them as possible um, because that was that was affecting my uh, uh, ability to initially stop people, initially start a conversation. And uh, when you when you learn this, so we, we've talked about this uh, extensively, and I think this is a, this is a very good topic, and this is this is a topic especially important for people. Um, for people who have recently immigrated in the in the US who were not born in the US who were not kind of born with the with the same kind of level how do, how do you explain this like if you've immigrated in the US from from a less developed country then something that 
could be very stylish and, and great in, in the country where the guy is originally from, well, that could be the way you kind know, of poor people dress in, in the US, in the New York City. So, so people have to be aware of this. And I, I've done a podcast episode about this, uh, where, where we talked, uh, and, uh, where we talked about this ex- extensively. But okay. So you fix your looks. Things start to look better and better. I assume this is uh, more or less where you also start. Uh, after this, I assume the next thing was to develop your own style of game, right? Um, so it wasn't linear. I was kind of doing these two things at the same time. Um, this So mm-hmm. this happened, this was, let's see, 29, 2018 is when I did that Euro trip, met you. Um, also, one thing that I really learned from, from you and other day gamers in in Riga was um, how much volume you you guys did. I was <laughs> I was I realized I was not doing enough. That was, it was from that moment that I realized I need to do way more approaches than I than I think I am doing. Um, and I was doing like three or four a week. You guys were doing I think ten a day or something like that. Yeah, know, some crazy definitely. number. Not really, but around that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd see you at midday um, at the square, and then I'd see you at the end of the day approaching. <laughs> anyway, um, I came back. Well, when I came back from that, I was doing the, uh, I had the volume in there. So I think 2018, 2019 uh, is when I was working on, I was able to do more volume in uh, New York, and I was able to get this feedback, right? I had and I guess that's the good thing, right? By moving from San Francisco to New York, and in San Francisco, I could have kept the style I had and been fine. That's the funny thing, which is true to what you just made. In San Francisco, the difference between a, a, a homeless person and a millionaire is, in terms of looks, is nothing. Like literally, they, they could look the same. So people do not, uh, people do not just off the bat ignore you, dismiss you because you look, you look like a bum. It's because a lot of people who are super rich uh, look like bums. Look at Jack Dose's like Jesus beard, right? Like, yeah. Anyways, you, if you get the point, so the the idea you mentioned about the fact that what can work in one location may not work in another is quite true. And so I had to kind of when I evolved by doing these approaches, I was getting feedback in terms of how people responded to me initially before I uttered my any words. And um, so in 2019. I got a bunch of that feedback. Um, I was still resistant to change. Um, but at the same time, while, while seeing that style, trying to see like, hey, okay, there is the presentation part that's affecting me. I was also trying to find ways to make approaching more interesting by not always saying the same scripted, um, repetitive, um, repetitive, uh, words and interacting the same way because it all was good boring then i wasn't interested in the girls as much i was like oh well this is this is kind of they're just following a script i never got to actually uh, learn as much as i could that i wanted to about the uh the people that i was interacting with so it took about two years between 2018 and 2020 for me to evolve my style and then also start um uh be able to like more frequently incorporate um personal personal little um traits to the way that i was approaching um and i do have to preface this that a lot of things that i tried um experimented with some of them a lot of them failed but in other cases a lot of things worked so it then becomes a a game of try and error but while still making sure you have the fundamental principles down because the fundamentals will never change i i met so many people i met yad i met tom i met you i think i met other like good day gamers and i realized that there's a collective set of principles when it comes to code approach and day game that never change and you have to always have that at the core no matter what yeah definitely uh and uh, lastly uh, we have the the fifth pillar, living a happy life, and you're you're a positive dude in general. You're 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 always very friendly with people. You have you have great social circle, and in general, you're someone who surrounds yourself uh, with with really amazing people. But but I don't know anyone who's as good as you are with building a social circle of of like cool people. Uh, and and you do that. You did that a lot. Very very. You did that very successfully in in New York City. And I met some of your friends, and they're you know they're incredible dudes. And 
So, so let me ask you, being able to build this social circle and, and living a happy life, uh, do you feel that affects your results in day game or not really? Just a different, unrelated thing? Um, I may want to ask you one more question before I answer that. Why would that affect, why would that potentially affect day game? Uh, because, uh, let's say you are living a fulfilled life, so you're happier in general, you know, you have great people around you, you're, you're doing things you love in your life and then you're just a more positive dude. Oh, you're asking, does that kind of help day game, not necessarily affect it? You mean, because affect is kind of... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's it's, yeah. It's, I'm just I'm not saying it should or should not. I'm just trying to understand how you see it in your case. Mm. Um, I think really the way that I built my social circle was day game without trying to bang the people I was talking to. Um, and you remember, if you recall, you say that I had this whole friendly vibe, right? When I was doing my interactions with with girls that you noticed. Um, that's a vibe that I've always kept. It's just that I switched it for dates because I realized that you, you need to have some polarity and there's some other things that have to be there if you're really trying to get laid. But in terms of making friends, um, that, um, I already, I think I already just have that personality where I am always curious about people. Um, and I, I will always interact with anybody in any situation that is willing to interact with me back. And not everybody does, but I talk to everybody. And I've been able to kind of get a good sense of people that I can click with and people that I, I should hang out with longer. Um, so overall, I think I, to answer that question to be more that I would say it's positive. I would say it's positive. If there's anybody that's listening to this, that, um, at least for me, by interacting with people every day or being curious about people being, um, optimistic about um, meeting new people, regardless of whether or not they are receptive to meeting you, um, just opens doors. Um, it opens doors and it allows you to be more comfortable in um, very, what could be high pressure social situations, which are not really high pressure if you do it enough. Everything is you kind of kind of get a sixth sense for how to navigate most social situations. And I think that that actually helps um, how helps me in day game because ultimately now what I can do is if I need to um, invite somebody to somebody out, um, I can also just invite them to join me and my friends at a, a thing we're doing. And that is a lot easier than trying to always do one-on-one, -on -one, especially in a city where people are always assessing whether going out to meet somebody is worth their while versus the other thing they could be going through. Yeah. And uh, finally, I know that uh, you, you you do party, you do party a lot, but you party in your own circle, uh, a circle you become sort of part of. And, and, and so have your day games, are you using anything or how to, how to put this? Are you using your seduction skills in these environments as well? Because where, where, I know you've experimented with this, but I never, I, I don't know how, the, how this ended and... and, and were there, there were any results with with uh, kind of seducing girls in these social environments so, uh, that you're part of? Yeah, um, I think the thing with um, <laughs> the thing that that skips when it comes to social. So there are two different kinds of social situations. There's a social situation where um, the circle it's a circle of people that know each other, and then there's a social situation where I could be with my friend, let's say, in a venue that has other people the the mechanics are slightly different so with the one where there where it's kind of like let's say you could say kind of house party style where it's a smaller smaller group but still large let's say 20 people or more um what you don't have to worry about is that initial stranger danger you don't need to disarm people right and which is funny because like on the street and in code approach the first thing you need to do is always get the person to like relax and like be willing to talk to you that is not necessary if you're already doing like this intimate social setting whereby all you have to do is then just flirt, flirt. And, um, you have like the, um, or at least a flirt. And then I have the, the, the goodwill and like the social proof of all the other people that know me who can easily like speak to it. So, um, it's actually a bit easier in that case, uh, or significantly easier. In fact, 
one of or two of my friends were throwing parties in 2020 and 2021 and it was so easy to like just inter- they would invite a lot of girls and it would be like a ratio of four to one and it was so laid back and a lot of the girls just wanted to like hang out with a bunch of guys like they were trying to like get dates too and they wanted to get late so it was just easy um it was a lot easier in that situation to interact you just need to not be creepy in fact if anything dial dial things back a little the alternative social situation that I'm in is where um, one of my friends who's a DJ, he DJs and he goes to these, sometimes he, he DJs at ex- exclusive clubs that I otherwise wouldn't be able to get into. And while we're there, usually that's when I kind of will use some of the uh, the day game, um, not necessarily principles, because those are really seduction principles that I think are are very universal but um some of the uh, techniques which is like the um the complement the observation and complement if i can't think of if i can't if i i feel like a hey i mean a hi how are you doing or like hey you come here often which is funny but it actually does work uh, if i don't want to use that i'll actually use the um the uh, observation complement um and once once I was in uh just recently, not once, but recently I was in a in a really nice um kind of lounge that's near my place where I I have I'm able to get into because I use day game principles to actually get on the good side of the person that um that lets people in or not and they usually make people pay like three hundred dollars to get in. But I, I built this rapport using these these day game skills like of like complimenting people and i do it i compliment and tease in a different way these are guys but you, it can be done and they're always my side so it makes it easy for me to get into certain places without having to pay and anyway, i got into this exclusive place there was this ukrainian absolutely gorgeous ukrainian girl i tried to stop and she knew she was hot i tried to say hello and she just walked past me kind of gave me a, a little like look over the shoulder and kept walking and i kid you not i front stopped <laughs> went back i front stopped <laughs> And I literally just ran a day game set right in the lounge right there. And I could see with her eyes that I had her hooked in that moment just by doing that, um, that, um, that approach that way. So, um, yes, in, in, in different social situations based on calibration, certain aspects of day game, certain principles and certain techniques definitely have helped me. So uh, let's finish with what's next. Is there anything you're working on right now? Are there any any plans in in, in dating or or anything? Yeah, what's next? What's up? Yeah, um, I'm trying to leave New York. Um, if not leave New York, um, spend an extended amount of time outside of New York. I think I may wanna go somewhere warmer. I was in Portugal recently. Loved it. Um, a lot of Europeans, especially during the summer, just all fly into Lisbon and just chill there. Um, so I'm trying to get to a, I've been working the last three months to, to create a situation for myself where I can leave one extended period outside of New York, um, where it's cheaper and where I can have a lot more influence with, with kind of where I am. Um, and I'll also be, I think my goal this year is to have, so I've, I've been going on the path of just day game, day game, and never actually trying to um, be in a relationship of any sort or not even acknowledge it. So my challenge uh, for this year is to actually try and do the relationship game, but with trying to get the option to see to um, with the option to have it open one way open. So it would be like, I can see other people. She can't. Hopefully she's bisexual. So that solves the problem. But that's my plan. Nice. I like that plan. You know, because because out, um, out of all the groups of people I work with the most, that, that that's kind of the biggest one is the, the guys that want to, wanna, you know, want to learn game, want to wanna become very good with women, but then they want to maybe start a relationship. And when, when they find the right, when they find the, someone they really want to spend time with, then... After all, that is the topic that we're we're working on this month in the community. So that should be that should be fun as well. Anyways, Mr. Hitty, thank you very much for doing this. And I hope to see you soon in person. 
That's it guys, if you want to join me, Mr. T and other day gamers like us in our private community to ask us any day game questions you have, listen to our infills, join the group coaching calls, etc. Then you'll find all the information about the private community in the link in the description. That's it for this time. Thank you for listening. Ciao guys.